So, the camera only takes up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds before it auto shuts down. So, we're going to jump straight back into it. So, by the looks of things, I'll probably be releasing these now two to three a day so we can get it all out the way with. So, we're going to carry on right now. And But the thing is, what you just mentioned... It was happened before the lawsuit was filed, right? That you'd heard a little bit about things. But tell me, what was the net tangible benefit? What possible positive thing can happen from suing one of the most, one of the biggest studios, Sony, one of the most influential anime industry, you know, companies, Funimation, one of the most well-received and respected women in the anime industry, Monica, and then a random fucking dude who doesn't have anything to do with Funimation and then putting in the lawsuit that he does and then getting like laughed at. <laughs> and then another su super successful woman in Annis. What positive outcome could possibly come from that? Well, he salvaged, he he salvaged it. Yeah, he salvaged his job, didn't he? But the he thing and, and also, we're also talking over top of each other again. Microphone right. problems. Sorry, gentlemen. Go ahead, Ron. Oh. No, I'm, I wanted to hear what Ken was saying because it, uh, this is a very this is a great conversation. This is some real shit. Yeah. Like, what were you saying, Ken? I was saying that the point of the lawsuit, and it pretty much any lawsuit, you, you really don't want to go through the whole damn thing if you don't have to. It's so much time. It's so much. I mean, you so much money. You know yourself. Right. Fuck yeah, I do. The, the goal would have, <laughs> I know, right? The goal yeah. would have been. To walk out of a, a room and say, all right, we did shit. You guys did shit. Let's figure this out. Okay, you're come. You know, the ideal thing would be fix back. Mediation and last October. Deep, whatever. Uh, and, you know, he makes some statements, does, you know, extra trainings or some shit. Right. That probably could have been figured out. Right. But yeah, probably could that have. That was the goal. So there is a positive goal from Vic's side of it to why he would pursue the lawsuit. That doesn't right. mean you guys see it that way because you guys have your side of it. You guys have what your observations of it. I want to jump away from the lawsuit for a minute because sure. I feel like we could get in the weeds on this. And I want to go back to 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 the beginning of this. Right. What did you guys think would happen when and I know you didn't know because you didn't find out till after. Mm -hmm. But what did you guys think would happen? To Vic, when this all came out, what was the goal? Our goal wasn't didn't have Vic in mind. Our goal was to speak the truth, and just stand in our position of truth, and that was the goal. Ultimately, was to just be honest. Did you have a thought about the impacts it would have cascading down the line? And that's part of where where it goes into it, and I can't be concerned with what his actions could do to him. I can just speak and be concerned with what my words will have weight. I knew when we spoke up that potentially he could sue us. But I knew that if he tried to sue us, good luck because we were winning because we spoke the truth. And that's the part where it's people can have a disagreement all day long about the situation. I wasn't concerned about certain things because I was concerned with the truth. However comes of it, that is what it is. And that's kind of where it all started, was speak the truth and see what the fuck happens after that. Well, we have to figure in the actions, our actions into how it impacts other people. Of course. Just if, we go back, if we go back to, you know, your, your history with your spouses and, and, and moving forward, right. you know, the things we do have an impact on other people. So moving, coming out and saying, hey, Vic did this to me or did this to my, mm -hmm. my partner. That's mm -hmm. going to have a negative impact on the person you're making those statements about. Good. So what, well, I mean, if someone accuses me of sexual assault, accuses someone I know of it or anything, any kind of sexual impropriety, that's a hell of a accusation to make. It's not a light one. And True. so I, you know, I said before, I think I posted on the forums, someone did that to me it put, my livelihood on the line, I'd be freaking the fuck out. I'd be upset. You know, I've dealt with depression. You know, I've, I think I said before, you know, I've twice tried to kill myself because of Sorry, how bad things have gone. You know, Jeez, I've thankfully man. moved past that. But 
I would be very, very, I'd be teetering on a dark ledge. Yeah. And I would expect almost anyone to do it. Even someone who did do something wrong. Right. You're still looking at your livelihood disappearing in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And so That's, do we yeah. factor in, you know, as part of, you know, the healing process of working with any kind of abuse or assault or anything like that, the end goal, you know, and I, and I was working on this with clients not too long ago mm -hmm. on forgiving people who have hurt them in their lives. Right. It's not something they have to do. Yeah. It's not something, but being able to forget, it doesn't mean what they did was right or wrong. It just means I can move past this. Yeah. You know, was it not possible to be done without doing what we did though? Like, did it have to go down the way it did? No, honest. Well, speaking up was our choice. It only happened okay. after he had issued his apology. The lawsuit wasn't our choice. We reacted to a lawsuit that was filed against us. I don't mean the lawsuit. I know. I don't talk. I'm not talking. The lawsuit's oh, immaterial at this point. Right. And but, I feel like when, in, in the speaking up part, that is something that is a conviction, right? Like, for instance, I just got in a big fight today um, with my family on because I posted about Black Lives Matter. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that people should have the right to express themselves and that they have been a dis there's been a complete horrible treatment of black families in, in, in our country. My parents decided to chime in on my Facebook page and my hero, my dad, I had to block them. So when we go up about that, when you speak up, mm. there's consequences, right? It could be a block of your dad. It could be a lawsuit. But if you believe something, what are you willing to sacrifice? I put on the line 300 grand. I, I blocked my dad. That's why we why, did. Why'd you have to block him though? Why couldn't you what forgive him for his statements and just move past it? But I mean, see, that, have to... as, right, as a therapist, Ken, I would, in a situation, would you encourage someone to allow an influence that could be damaging to come into their life? Or should I be able to put a boundary in place that protects me from people who are, in a sense, abusive in their situation when they're saying it's okay to be racist? So... After what his mum done to him in the past and growing up and he's literally said he was scared of his dad and everything else. Now he decides to block him and, you know, stop talking to him just because he's a racist. But an abuser and everything else is fine. Ron, you're not making sense, mate. And it's okay to say that I won't talk to you if you dated a person of... Uh, another color or if you had a kid from another color i would disown you so should i be okay to put a boundary in place and block my parents from that or should i just allow them to communicate with me and and put their words onto my forum it's their opinion what would well, be an you're literally boundary, saying though. exactly what well, they're down to you be the defined boundary though because boundaries can be different things block. a boundary could be a block a boundary could be a lawsuit yeah. you know you can build the men you can build the mental boundary of Okay, this is my dad's opinions. My dad, for whatever reason, has the views of, you know, these these racist beliefs for some reason. Yeah. And while I don't like them and I don't agree with them, this is one part of my dad, and I can accept the rest of him. You don't mm -hmm. have to like that part of him. You can right. like the rest of him. Oh yeah. You know, I've I've got tons of people in my life that. I, I do not like their politics. I don't like some of their beliefs, but they're still in my life because I could separate that from the rest of them. Because if we did that with everyone, if we let one thing control the whole conversation, control the whole person, the whole relationship, you'd never have anyone in your life because there's going to be something that 100% you, you can agree on, that you will come to conflict on. Right. You know, a relationship is compromised. True. Whether it's a sexual relationship, whether it's uh, an emotional one, whether it's family, it's right. all about compromise. And compromise can be, I don't like the fact that you have these racist opinions, but right. I'm going to walk away from that. But just don't talk to me about them. Don't bring them up to me. 
And, that could be that, your boundary. That's fair. But I think that there should, like, in my opinion, there should be hard outs. Like, a, like I need to let them know, like, my red. And so my red in a relationship or my I'm, I'm done with this interaction, I can't go any further, is when somebody tells a community, whether it be trans, gay, black, whatever, I can't, that's my that's my limit. And that's when I'll, I'll say, you know what, this relationship isn't worth it for me. And as much as my dad is my hero, a person that's going to tell a trans person or a person of color they're not worthy, fuck them. That's my dream. I like to just jump in here just for a quick Go second ahead. or two. Right. One of the few things that we were talking about before you came on the show was why is, was it Sally, Julie, mad at me because I haven't talked to them? And one of the few things about social media that I found from a very, very personal level and for what it's worth is that I really found that social media, a lot of Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, whatever the case may be, um, really interferes with the actual communication process. Because basically through texting, typing, or the case may be, you cannot actually see or hear what they're actually saying or what they're actually trying to portray through that. So the yeah. thing is that instead of blocking your dad, which, which probably may, maybe the best thing to do at this point in time. Right. W will you plan to talk to him and say, hey, oh. dad, look, this really fucking hurt me. Why yeah. did you say X, Y, and Z, especially mm. in this political climate we're in, especially where I'm coming from, from this lawsuit, stuff in line, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Do you realize the actions you took on this stupid platform, on my Facebook wall, impact me to this level? Because basically the things is that I honestly feel um, if you call, if you love somebody, especially yeah. when you just called your dad, your hero, for goodness sakes, sure. obviously with, 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 you know, with, with people like myself, things, when I say I love someone or I care about someone and they're my friend, I will not be disingenuous with them. I will go up and say, Hey, look, 100%. And this is that's how it should them. be face to face over the phone or any form of communication. Like I possibly can say, look, what you just did bug me so much. It drove me to this point. And the thing is, you're talking about red coming towards lines. Everyone has those boundaries. And the thing is that sometimes we don't effectively communicate those particular boundaries. So as a suggestion, something that I would do if I were you is talk yeah. to your dad when you're a little more subtle, yeah. a little more calm and say, look, this is what bugged me. Because the thing is the same time here for my particular social media, I don't let my family get involved with it. It's just because they see something and go, oh my God, Ron is being... Jump yeah. down, we're gonna save a bomb. Yeah. I'm like, oh my yeah. god, do I, do I need this headache? <laughs> and the answer is no, I do not. So right. that's a separation I have. And on top of all that, especially, especially dealing with media, because yeah. everyone in this particular conversation could completely relate to is that there's a lot of people who are very, very passionate when they get involved mm -hmm. with things. And sometimes right. they don't know the full picture. Right. Even myself included and people who are like to come after me and the things I do and stuff like that. They don't know the whole picture. And sometimes they don't deserve to know the whole thing because it comes down to it. It's none of their business. Right. So basically this is, I'm not going to put the emphasis on me. I'm going to get back to neutral here. So basically right. the thing is that as a suggestion from one Ron to another, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> talk to your, talk to your dad take yeah. them off block, tell them where you're coming from, and basically try to resolve the issue um, over the phone yeah. or in person. Because the thing is that when you block somebody and stuff like that, because I've been through this, especially people who are very important to me, I'm going, what the fuck did I do? What's going on? And the thing right. is, I don't know that. The only thing I see is there's not access to X, Y, and Z. And that, then that person, the one who has been blocked, they start going off on a tangent on whatever social media platform they're on. And like, oh, well, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Oh, well, okay, then fuck them. That's what it could be. And, oh, this whole thing I've got so far, with Ron saying he had to block his dad, it's like, out of everything that his father and his mother, his parents, have put him through the way he was raised and everything else, saying that he was scared, it had to be something to do with being racism that got him to actually be like, you know what, no, I'm not going to talk to you. So that could be a possible way for why he thinks going around and hitting people or whatever, that's probably why he thought it was fine. Because, again, that's how he was brought up. But 
I with uh, understand one hundred percent with Mister Hop on this one hundred percent. That is even more furious. So, again, I just want to jump in there very quickly. I apologize for interrupting, Ken. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. So, so basically, yeah. Yeah, it's fair, and that that's where I'm just setting the boundary to where I can process my feelings. Yeah. Because I don't want to say something that could damage our relationship. So of it's course. like a temporary block. Let me block you so I can gather my shit, figure out how I feel, and then communicate. And that's part of the process. And so for now, it's just something where I can bifurcate my life. I need to still be sick, do my thing, but I need to handle this situation when I'm not emotional. Because right now, it's still raw. Yeah, of course. So that is how it is. You know, that I have to block for a minute, but I 100% agree with you that I will eventually call him and have a heart to heart because i think that in any situation there is that that's what's so powerful and moving about this it's a dichotomy while everything happens there's a human side to both and i see that and that people are hurting and it sucks yeah definitely. you know no i want to pers- oh, sorry did you have something to say yeah about? i'm i'm going i'm going to just sorry, add on to what what uh, mr hop had said a little bit here but also expand on it so social media has given us a way to kind of have that have that immediate reaction mm-hmm. and everything else like that and i do i do think that separating yourself at that point was the, the appropriate move and giving yourself a bit of breathing space so i mean kudos for making that decision um one thing that you do have to be very keenly aware of is it's very very easy to get comfortable and and this is something for everybody, just not not just yourself uh, here, Ron. This is something for everybody. It's very very easy to get comfortable to create basically an insulated box for yourself to be in, where people just agree with you. Um, it's it's very difficult to be a good friend. It's very difficult to be the good friend. Like I know it's something I struggled with for many many years, and like I did stuff to try and make people happy. I did stuff to try and appease people, what have you. But the fact of the matter is, it's like, if I'm sitting here and, like, I'm enabling, it's like Mr. Hop, for example, if I'm enabling him to, to, if I see that he's doing something bad, or if he's doing something that is damaging him, <laughs> and I let that happen, and if I encourage him to keep doing it, that makes me a terrible person, right? Mm-hmm. Like, while, while Mr. Hop is doing something that is detrimental to him and detrimental to others, and I'm actively encouraging that and you know for the sake of i don't want to hurt his feelings and i don't want to hurt that relationship that's bad badly reflective on me it takes it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of strength to stand up and say hey this is something and it may take time like it may it may take some some uh you step back and, and say okay i need to evaluate how i approach this but you go to that person and say hey you've been doing this stuff i've been hearing this stuff about you you've been doing x y or z that's not cool. Maybe right. you should think about rethink about doing that, and then put the put that back in their court to reevaluate. Give them time to try and fix it. And if that doesn't fix, then like then you then you have to take action from there. Like for myself, like you, you say that your dad's your hero, right? Like my parents did a lot for me. Had had uh, this that and the other thing happen growing up, sure, but eventually came to an understanding of of what kind of people they were. When I came out as trans, my parents didn't support it. I mean, they they tolerate it, but they still reference me in the in the wrong name. They still reference me in the wrong gender. So they don't accept that, and I don't I don't block them out. I let them know, hey, this is something that hurts me, and they and if they continue to keep doing it, then I start peeling back and peeling back a bit more, and they're suffering the consequences of not being accepting, right. and and that's that's what it has to come down to. It's like you have to let them know what you're what your line is and you have to let them know what the consequences of that are going to be and then follow through with that so because basically everyone can't guess what your boundaries are yeah. if you do not effectively communicate yeah. that because yeah. the thing is that as an example um let's go back to yours truly <laughs> if i cross over a line i'm yeah. not doing it to be an asshole Right. I just crossed over a line that I honestly didn't realize. And at the yeah. same time, I'm going through my own particular problems right now, both mental and physical. Like, unfortunately, yeah. my uh, my type 2 diabetes has gotten the best of me. And unfortunately, some of the uh, call, uh, occultications have been taking place. And the thing is that that's, unfortunately, yeah. laid me in a little bit of therapy myself these days. Just right. because the thing is working through that, getting through that and stuff like that. But however, 
getting back to base here, it's very important to effectively communicate with that. Because if you don't yeah. have that, then how are people supposed to know what's going on? What did I do to get Sally upset with me and stuff right. like that? Yeah. So. And that's the part about is just communicating and, and doing the thing. It's like, Chris, I am so sorry your parents are like that. It's it's something that I've I've accepted yeah. and then like I've grew up with like yeah. I had I had the issues like early on when my parents got divorced when I was like when I was a lot younger like I had a lot of that internal struggle a lot of that that coming to terms with things and I, I understand who they are and and why they made those decisions and so later on in life when it came to like coming to terms that okay they don't accept that part of me like only one person in my family does and that's fine i have a great relationship with her other people are are jealous of her because they they we talk all the time and yeah. they don't understand it but i keep telling them it's like this is why i'm not having that close relationship with you because you're not accepting of that so it's just one of those things like i'm i'm past the point of being upset about it it's just yeah. a fact of life so yeah. but it just sucks you know what i mean like you're a human and our parents mean something to us and i'm i'm proud of you for being where you are yeah. if my son had made the decision that you did i'd be proud you know what i mean like i want him to feel happy in whatever transition and he's never had to i've had that communication with him early that that's not an issue with me whatever i want him happy yeah. and i'm proud of you Okay. Well, and I, I, I appreciate the sentiment. I really do. And uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of segue into a topic here with another unfair question for you. Sure. Um, so <laughs> kind of, kind of along this, kind of along the same lines here. Cause like, I, I can see that I, I can see that, you know, this, the, the way that the, the way that your dad kind of let you down in this, it really hurts you and everything else like that. So, because because of the way that you've been uh, your upbringing and stuff like that, I don't know. I, you've talked about it a lot. I don't know if you've uh, finally been able to resolve all the stuff that you had when you were growing up. Yeah. Do you at all see? And this is something like again, unfair question. Do you at all see that the perception that you have of say Ty or Nick or Vic or anything like that 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 is an extension of how you were treated as a child or anything like that? That's a, that's a good question. So um, I don't have as many hard feelings towards Vic as I do as Ty and his team. That's Again, going back to professionals, Vic did what he had to do because of the things that you had mentioned earlier. He was freaking out. He didn't know what to do. It's his career, blah, blah, blah. So I get it. My issues with the professionals, I don't view Ty and – my opinion of Ty and Nick is probably one that I have more respect for it, literally any other human being on the planet than both of those two people. Because I feel like they did things and spoke to things that hurt people. Without well, You made an interesting – oh, go ahead. Without even thinking about it. Because there are kids that are hurting, and they deserve better. Yeah. That's my opinion. They were trying to do what they thought was right, but in my opinion, I think they hurt people. Oh, you spoke to something interesting at the beginning that I think I wanted to bring up earlier, drunk. but I didn't get a chance to. You stated you see Nick as some sort of abuser, abuser oh, yeah. to you and Monaco. Yes. Why is that? If you don't mind me asking, I think, and the thing about Nick is, I and that's the part that sucks because if you look at Nick. Uh, let me gather myself for a sec. Ugh. If you look at Nick, he is very gregarious. He is infectious. And I think he has a lot of potential. Um, but the reason why I see him is before Nick got involved, it was people online, the typical shit. But when he got involved, if you go back and watch it and watch his videos, it's almost like there's moments of rallying cries. Maybe he didn't mean it intentionally. But kids take what he says and then implement that or people. When I say kids, I am i don't mean to I mean, people, yeah. people in general. Wizards online. Um, they took that and used it to bully and harass. And so 
you know, looking at it like objectively, I want to, to talk to Nick because I don't like having hate in my heart for anyone. So I would love the opportunity to sit down. That, like we were talking last time, uh, Mr. Hop, like about getting into a fist fight and it's over, right? And you can mm -hmm. be friends with somebody. I feel like if Nick knew me as a person, he'd realize that I'm an asshole at times. I'm pretty funny occasionally. And I'm just a human being who fucks up, but just like everyone else. And so why I see him so adversarial is a dis is because of the level that he has committed himself to hate and to say on there, I want them ground into the dust. I want this. I want that. And just go on and on and on for over a year and a half. Have I posted any videos, anything? Have I incur No. And the, the truth is, it's in the record. I've corrected people when they've misappropriated certain actions towards people. And that's where it's like frustrating on his side because, mm -hmm. and, and and that's what sucks because this takes it outside of Vic, right? But unfortunately, because he's the person that's been really pushing for this stuff, he becomes a center, uh, an integral figure. And that's what kind of makes us shitty because if say no Vic, no Ty, he chooses some other people, he goes about this lawsuit, we communicate, who knows what could happen today, but we won't have that opportunity because they tried to make us and grind us and, and try to make us look like bad people to everyone. And I've been, I've received my companies and different places have received emails and different threats and different stuff. And people have been tweeting about me, accusing me of stuff. And anytime I try to chime in, it's like, oh, well, you said in your deposition that you would ignore it. Well, I can ignore it in the sense that I'm not going to file a lawsuit or maybe I'll, I'll think about it. But in the end, I'm not going to pursue it. But they use those things to instigate and try to pick, 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 pick. because they, And that's the part that's frustrating is like, I feel like if he didn't get involved, this would not be to this level. Like, I'm okay with somebody suing me. I knew that I was potentially going to be sued by my state when we talked. That's okay. Well, That's let me it. ask this then. Go ahead. Where do you think? Why do you think Nick hates you? Because that's an important. That's a very question. good question. Because he hasn't taken a second of, of time to really look into the look into this with a with an objective mindset. I would disagree with you on that. In a sense. Interesting. I've watched pretty much every single video of Nick since this started. Sure. And. I think he's tried to take this from a, you know, and this is his side of it too, from a perception of this is a really complex situation. It's causing a kind of stir in the community and he gets drug into it. Uh, Cause, Oh, you're a lawyer. What's going on? Can you like, so he gets drug into it. So he analyzing what's going on and from what he's seeing from the evidence presented, which is also the evidence everyone else sees, he goes, well, this doesn't hold. I'm going to pause it by there. As you can see, we are coming up to the nearly 30 minute mark. So we're going to cut it off. Please, if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Leave your opinion down below. Give us a thumbs up or a dislike. It's up to you. And I hope to see each and every one of you in the next video.